now you're on. Okay, yeah, thank you. I'm going to first review the Landau Fermi liquid theory and then describe, reformulate Landau Fermi liquid theory as a dynamic of shapes uh, using the method of the co join orbit. Um, based on the idea that um, uh, the uh, state of a Fermi surface can be described as a point on the co join orbit of a group of canonical transformation. And that would lead to a reformulation of Landau's Fermi liquid theory. The work that I uh, um, will describe to you in this talk is based on a paper written uh, uh, this uh, March uh, by Luca de la, de la Cretas, uh, postdoc in Chicago. Um, do Umang Meta, two students in Chicago, and myself. Uh, so let's first uh, remind ourselves that Landau's Fermi liquid theory was first formulated by Landau uh, in the 1950s. And the idea that Landau has is that even if we start our description, our, if our system consists of fermions which may interact strongly with, with each other near the Fermi surface, uh, the notion of the quasi-particle becomes more and more well-defined. And the notion of the Fermi surface survive even when the interaction between the original fermions uh, may be strong. Landau's Fermi liquid theory has been successfully applied to many systems like helium-3, uh, electrons in metals, neutrons in neutron star, and possibly many other examples. The Landau's Fermi liquid theory is sometimes described uh, in the popular press as a theory of uh, a free theory, theory of free particles. Uh, but as we will see, the structure of Landau's theory is very different from the uh, example of free field theory that one usually learns from textbooks like free scalar field or free fermion field theory. It is instructive then to first uh, uh, go through the formulation of Landau's Fermi liquid theory as it was originally described uh, by Landau. So Landau uh, tells us that the state of a Fermi a liquid at low energies can be characterized by a uh, phase space distribution function. So F is a function of T, X, and P. From the point of view of quantum mechanics, this might be, um, one might see that is contradictory to specify the, both the position and the momentum of the particles. Uh, but once um, have to think about this distribution function and describing um, particle that can be localized only in a certain uh, volume in, uh, in, 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 in space. And when this volume is, the, the uncertainty in the definition of X is large enough, then we can uh, describe the phase space distribution function both in terms of X and P. Uh, I read in a recent interview by Celine that uh, Celine claimed that it was he who um, sold Landau the idea that uh, Fermi liquid can be described by a, a phase space distribution function, or at least convinced Landau that this notion exists. So now um, uh, uh, let's 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 consider the case of of a free fermion first. Um, for free fermion, if we put that free Fermi gas in a external electromagnetic field, then one can write down the Liouville's equations, or one can think about that also as the Vlasov equation or a, um, a collision-less Boltzmann equations. So df over dt, the time uh, derivative of the distribution function is given by uh, the, um, it is, the evolution depends on how fast the particle move in phase space. So this V of P is the, velocity of the particle in configuration space, that is the epsilon over dp, the group velocity, this particle. And here, E cross V uh, cross B, E plus V cross B is the Lorentz force acting on the system, P dot. So this equation completely determine how the phase space distribution function evolved as a function of time. Given uh, uh, external field, we can, determine the response of a Fermi liquid to such an external perturbation. Moreover, one can notice the following. If the distribution function is 
uh, is the zero or one, like it is in the ground state of a Fermi uh, liquid, then the property that this function is always zero and one preserved under the Liouville's evolution. And that's because the Liouville equation preserves the phase space. And so if we follow each volume of phase space as it moves in phase, in, uh, as it moves, uh, the distribution function remains either one or zero, depending on whether it was one or zero in the beginning. And so the Liouville equation preserves the sharpness of the Fermi surface. And then one can think about this uh, time evolution as the evolution of the shape of the Fermi surface. So here, uh, what happens? So I'm drawing here um, the, the, the original Fermi surface, uh, say a T equal minus infinity. We have a spherical Fermi surface in a Fermi liquid with ro rotational symmetry. That would be the ground state. And then we turn on some electromagnetic field. And what happened is that the shape deformed. So the figure on the right, one have to think about that as the particular shape of the Fermi surface at a particular point in space and time. At every point in space and time, we would have a different shape. And our task is try to formulate the time evolution of this shape in a mathematically uh, convenient way. Uh, if there is... The connectedness of the Fermi. I think if the um, if uh, I think in the it, I think mathematically this equation doesn't allow it. But if the equation doesn't apply itself, then the Fermi surface can split. But if one can apply this. Uh, If this equation applies, then I think there is the surface cannot split. Yeah. Given some properties, uh, if if the property of this function, for example, epsilon of p is is regular function with some nice properties, etc. The Landau, Landau Fermi liquid theory is, is also predictive in the sense that one can use it to compute uh, physical quantities. Uh, for example, the linear response of a system to external, say, electric field. Uh, so here is an example of the calculation of the density-density correlation function, it's called pi zero zero, which how the density of the system changes under uh, external sc scalar potential. One would one should just uh, solve the equation, the Liouville equation in an ex external electric field, which is gradient of the potential is zero. And then solve it into linear uh, approximation. One find the uh, re response function to be this integral. Now this integral turned out to be exactly e the same as the uh, one would compute. One would find using the usual Green's function method in the limit of small q. If q is small, then this formula would uh, be valid. So that illustrates. Uh, the validity of the Landau's theory, although it doesn't know. When we write down the Landau theory, it's written not in terms of the indiv individual um, electrons, in terms of some uh, grossly, uh, coarsely defined um, distribution function, but it reproduces the correct uh, response function. Now, Landau's contribution is actually more non-trivial than that. He, uh, figure out how to include interaction between the electron between the original fermions into the effective um, uh, Liouville description. Uh, uh, he showed that uh, the only thing that one need to do is to include the so-called Landau parameter, which is a function of two point at p and p prime in momentum space, or uh, rather only um, to the extent that one needs it only. Uh, p will be prime near the Fermi surface. And then the, um, the modification in the Liouville equation becomes the modification of the energy of a quasi-particle with momentum p and at point x. The energy uh, is the bare energy plus the contribution that comes from 
uh, the distribution of particle at other values of momentum, but at the same point in space. So this integral is a linear correction to the energy coming from the deviation of the distribution function uh, at point X and P, uh, at the same point X, but at different P, I forget to write a prime here. So delta F at X and P prime. And the kinetic equation in Sren uh, written down in a very uh, a similar way. One has to also include into the um, time evolution of coordinate its momentum, the deviation of the uh, energy from its bare value. So here the group velocity, and also there is a, another contribution to the force that depends on derivative of this function with respect to x. And that's all that one needs to be able to compute, reproduce the linear, linear response of an interacting now Fermi system to external electromagnetic field. Now the Landau's Fermi liquid theory as Landau has um, uh, uh, written down is not a field theory. If you can see it's formulated completely in terms of the some equation of motion, not in terms of an action. And that um, has some uh, consequences. Uh, first of all, we lose access to a large toolbox of field theory, effective field theory. We don't lose the Wilsonian point of view. Uh, although Landau's formula liquid theory looks like uh, effective low energy field theory, but it's not something that one can understand from a Wilsonian uh, perspective. Um, there is some advantages if one can reformulate uh, Landau's formula liquid theory as a field theory. And one of the advantage may be that one can uh, better uh, solve the problem of non-Fermi liquids. So these non-Fermi liquids presumably exist uh, in some places in nature. Uh, one place is uh, two by two plus one dimensional electrons in the high magnetic fields, um, the quantum hole effect. Uh, the quantum hole effect, uh, the, the half field Landau level uh, is supposed to be uh, dual to a theory of composite fermions at finite density coupled to a gauge field. And that problem of uh, fermions at finite density with a Fermi surface coupled to a, a gauge field is one of the places where, uh, where, where presumably a non-Fermi liquid would, would, would appear. So to understand the Fermi liquid, non-Fermi liquid, one uh, needs to first try to, at least from my perspective, one, it's useful to reformulate Landau's Fermi liquid theory as an effective field theory. Previous approaches has been, uh, uh, there, there have been some previous uh, approaches uh, toward this goal. So uh, uh, earlier in the 1990s, they were worked by Benfato, Galavotti, uh, and then Pulchinski and, and Shankar, trying to uh, re, reinterpret Landau's theory as an effective theory of the fermionic quasi-particle. And so one write down some, uh, some, some Lagrangian, or some action that depends on the fields of the fermions uh, and try to include the Landau's interaction as a four Fermi interaction between this quasi particle fermion. So that Lagrangian you would see is not the most simple Lagrangian. So the, 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 one of the, um, the drawback of this formulation is that it has to be done in momentum space. And so in, in momentum space, it's very, difficult to couple the theory, for example, to external gauge field. Um, also, another thing that makes this, uh, formal, this formalism, uh, um, it, 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 let's say maybe something else has to be done is that there, in this formalism, there is a unnatural cancellation between diagrams. So if one compute not two point function, for example, but the three point function, uh, one see that there are three, two diagrams that almost cancel each other exactly in the infrared. And that, that non-natural cancellation survived to four point, five point function and become more and more severe. And so uh, something else probably is here. L1, is a momentum in... Um, A1 is momentum. Uh, okay, so here actually I, Lost. 
I'm not. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's this L. It, it, it is. I think it's from Polchinski, and this L may be P, maybe K plus L. I I forget his notation. Uh, I, I'm not uh, saying that uh, I, 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 uh, this is important for the, the talk. I'm just trying to illustrate that Otherwise, one. It looks like, original Hamiltonian. It, it looks like an original Hamiltonian, but one has to, to, to interpret this V as some effective uh, interaction. So the idea is pretty simple that there is some effective interaction that got to renormalize re as one goes to into infrared. Another uh, set of ideas um, comes from two, one plus one dimensions, where one knows that a fermion can be bosonized into a boson. And during this bosonization, the density and the current becomes a derivative of some bosonic field. But to uh, trans transfer this idea to higher dimension, uh, the situation becomes very complicated. That's because now, instead of one boson, one, in one plus one dimensions, the Fermi surface are just point. But in higher dimension, the Fermi surface now has an a, internal extension, like it is a line or a surface. And so one would have now one chiral boson per point on the Fermi surface. And that makes the theory very complicated. And there is no general rule to write down such an action. One try to, one would try to go from the microscopic theory and de derive such a uh, 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 effective action, but but doing doing that is where it it, it technically compli complicated and doesn't ex exhibit the general uh, properties. Uh, recently, Els, Tolkien, and Sensel try to think about this problem in a uh, perspective of, uh, of 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 anomalies, and that's um, one thing that they notice is that there is mixing of mode with different theta. And that mixing also is very, uh, make this bosonization very non-trivial because suppose, suppose we put this uh, uh, electron in a magnetic field, then suddenly one fermion from one point can move to a point fermion at another point. So somehow dif different boson bosonic mode at different theta need to couple to each other. And how they couple to each other is a very non-trivial question. Now, in, the, in this talk, I want to answer a simple uh, classical uh, problem. Uh, and the, 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 the question is, can one formulate, reformulate Landau's equations as a equation that comes out from some action S, as an action depending on some few phi, so that delta S over delta phi equal to zero uh, is identical to Landau's kinetic equation. And the answer, my answer is to this question is yes, one can do that. And the method that one needs to use is the method of uh, co-adjoint orbit. So let's, uh, let, uh, I'm going to uh, flash to you just a few mathematical uh, trans transparencies, and then we are going to the more physical uh, application of this formalism. So consider a Lie group that we call G and corresponding to that is a Lie algebra that I also call G, but it's um, dif with a different font. That uh, small G is Lie algebra and large capital G is the Lie group. And for each element of the Lie algebra, one can exponentiate it into a, a element of the Lie group. Now we know from the theory of Lie a group and Lie algebra that there is something called the adjoint representation. So for Lie um, algebra, the adjoint representation is simply uh, realized by the, by the, by the uh, commutator. That is, if I have a, 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 an element of the Lie algebra G of F, then an action of the element G in the algebra on F is simply the, um, given by the commutator of G with F. So the adjoint representation is realized on a Lie algebra. And one can exponentiate that to a representation of the Lie group. Uh, so uh, for unitary Lie group, 
usually we write that f go to u f u minus one u is the exponent of that g now uh, there's something that usually we, we do not learn in uh, as a physicist in the course of uh, of lee uh, representation of lee group uh, it's the co joint representation because in a lot of times this co joint representation is very similar identical to the adjoint representation so uh, mathematicians uh, like to make this distinction between the space and the dual space so the lie algebra we call little g and the dual space g star are the space of all the linear map from g to 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 the number the real number so for each uh, uh, elements of the dual space and uh, elements of g each of such pair one can put a scalar product that belong to that is a real number and and this dual space it also realizes a representation of the uh, lie group and the lie algebra uh, we define this adjoint co-adjoint representation so that if we have a, an f and a capital f and apply a co uh, 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 joint uh, rotation on capital f and co-adjoint rotation on this f the scalar product is uh, is is preserved so that is how one can define the co-adjoint representation okay and then what is the co-adjoint orbit the co-adjoint orbit is defined as the orbit of a given point in co in, in 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 the dual space under uh, under the action of all possible uh, elements of the lie group so if I take one point and then use this co-adjoint representation and then rotate this point, and then one, one can define this co-adjoint orbit. And this co-adjoint orbit actually is a coset of the Lie group and the subgroup that, that keep this reference point fixed in space. Okay, so all this might look a bit uh, abstract, but I'm going to go to a, a physical uh, case of a Fermi a Fermi liquid that's relevant for Fermi liquid theory. So the idea is the following. The idea is that uh, all the uh, different shapes of the Fermi surface uh, that uh, evolve, that is the result of evolution of the original Fermi surface under the view uh, equation can be thought of as the result of a canonical transformation on the original Fermi surface. So all the state with a sharp Fermi surface and connected Fermi surface can be obtained from the original spherical Fermi surface by applying a canonical transformation. And this canonical transformation acts in the phase space of a single particle. The canonical transformation um, acts as follows. Uh, so first, the, 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 the infinitesimal canonical transformation or the elements of the Lie algebra are all functions of a phase space x and p so x go to x prime equal to x minus epsilon gradient over p of f and p go to p prime equal p plus epsilon gradient of x you can see here that this is basically a, a, a hamiltonian evolution under a time epsilon with the hamiltonian given by f and one can see that this preserve the poisson brackets like all hamiltonian evolution uh, the Lie algebra uh, um, is given by the Poisson brackets. That is, the commutator of two of such infinitesimal canonical transformation is another another canonical transformation whose function is the Poisson bracket of these two function f and g. So it is a Lie algebra, and exponentiating this Lie algebra, one gets the Lie group. That is, the group of all finite canonical transformation to the power of f. Now the dual space, what is the dual space F? So I'm going to define this dual space as also function of phase space, uh, X and P, and the scalar product between F, small f and capital F, I'm going to define as simply integral over the phase space of the product of small f and big F. And this equation has a interesting physical interpretation. If 
if one interpret capital F as an observable, so for example, P square over 2M, one possible fun, uh, uh, capital F, then this small f can be interpreted as the distribution function. It's a state. And the scalar product is the average value of this uh, observable capital F in the state given by F. It's very similar to the trace of, of the product of rho and F in quantum mechanics. Instead of taking the trace of the product of the density matrix and the operator here, which is take the classical integral of the phase space of the product of two functions. So the adjoint and co-adjoint action of the group uh, in this case are the same, it turned out, that uh, action of uh, group element exponent of G on, uh, on, uh, in, is realized in the same ways in the Lie algebra in the, in the dual space by the same formulas. So one can see that if we do this adjoint rotation, then the uh, scalar product of these two functions remain the same by some properties of the Poisson bracket. Uh, one can do integrating integration by part and show that. Any question? Okay, so now let's, uh, let's go back to the um, uh, problem of the Fermi liquid. So let's take the, our, let's try to construct the co-adjoint orbit. So the co-adjoint orbit, we take the reference state and try to apply different canonical transformation on that reference state. And the, our reference state is simply the uh, state with a spherical Fermi surface. And let's try to uh, uh, work um, in perturbation theory, that is um, for small uh, perturbations. So let me take the uh, one element of the Lie group of the canonical transformation ACU. Now, it's exponents of minus phi. This minus is just for convention. And phi is a function of phase space, x and p. So now using this, uh, this rule that um, we have before, a new distribution function is the action of the co-adjoint, the co-adjoint action on this f0. And it's just F0 minus two leading order in phi minus the commutator of phi with F0. By commutator, I mean the Poisson bracket. So this, uh, this can be calculated and rewritten in terms of another theta function. You see here that the theta function is now different from the original theta function. Uh, the position of the Fermi uh, surface has now moved. Uh, this P... The, the, this here p hat is the direction of uh, p in momentum space. Uh, p hat cross dot with gradient of phi is how much the Fermi surface has moved in the direction of p. Okay. Why, and why does the gradient of p not show up? The gradient because um, um, gradient of p not, what, of what? D, d phi dp, right? Somehow it depends only on p d phi dx. p d phi dx, because the um, Poisson brackets, so the Poisson brackets between phi and f0 is like dx phi dp of f0. Right? Uh, f0. Yeah, f0 has p dependent. But if yeah. I started with a non circular from a ah, if I start from a non homogeneous state, it's enough. Yeah, but 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 there is um but um all the it turns out that all the uh, it the 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 the, 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 the cohesion orbit does not depends on the choice of the reference point. You can choose different reference point and get the same uh, orbit. Now there is an ambiguity in the um, in the uh, parameterization of the point of the cohesion orbit as the elements of the group. Two different elements of a Lie group can correspond to the same point on co-adjoint orbit. And that's because if we I multiply this u by u times v, but v is the thing that preserve f0, then acting this u v on f0 give me the same as acting u on f0 because v doesn't do anything. And this procedure allows us to do a gauge fixing in our 
phi. In particular, one can uh, think about phi as not a function of x and p, but only a function of x and, uh, and, and, and the direction of p. We can assume that phi is, in, is the same at all point along a radial uh, direction in p. It depends only on the angle uh, parameter of p. And so phi is now a function of only x and theta. And that's, that's how a scalar field at each point in the Fermi surface appears in this formalism. Okay, so now let me write down the action that turn out to give rise to Landau's equation. So the action is written in the following way. So there is a very phase term or a Westumino Witten term that I've written in this uh, way. So U is, uh, remember U is a point, the parameterizes point in the Toa joint orbit. So here is the first derivative, how this point moved in time. And then this is the Hamiltonian that depends on the distribution function. The first sum can also be written alternatively as the integral of a two form, which in mathematics is called the Kirillov constant Suryo symplectic two form, uh, but it turned out to be also possible with some uh, uh, um, hand wave, some, some ignoring some term that is total derivative as uh, just integral over uh, time. For free for me on this, I'm sorry. This, this omega, I can write it, but probably I can write it privately for you, this, this omega. Uh, I have a slide, I can, I can show you this. Uh, uh, actually, it might be too cryptic for this slide, but this omega can be defined as follows, if I take a point and then define two uh, tension vector, they'll, uh, I, 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 I can, I, I can dis decipher this uh, for you a bit later, uh, but I want to uh, go to more physical um, uh, um, cal calculation. It is, it has a properties that it is, uh, close uh, to form. So it can be used as a, uh, as a definition of Poisson bracket on the, uh, as a symplectic form on the Kowa joint orbit. So this, um, this, this, this is an interesting um, place to, um, to, to stop and think about the, uh, this, this first term. The first term basically is the Berry phase term, which tell us how much the Berry phase a system occur when the Fermi surface changes its shape. So if I have a Fermi surface that move uh, in shape changes, and then we have a Berry phase. And apparently Landau's theory specify what is this Berry phase in a precise way. The Berry phase does not depend on the Landau parameter or the interaction at all. It is properties of the phase space itself. How did you choose this action? Why is this one? This one is, th th this Hamiltonian. Yeah, we can check that the equation of motion are all. So, so we, if we make this choice, then we can ver verify that all the correlation function from Landau's theory, the equation of motion, the Lewin's equation appears from this action. As I, I, I try to illustrate later. In particular, the coefficient in front of this term has to be chosen to be one, for example, and then everything should. Be. So the, the, this fine derivative, time derivative term is pretty unique. It's, uh, yeah, I can't see it. Can you? Uh, unitary perturbation theory and time, I think, is so, but, um, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I, I, uh, I wasn't uh, aware of, of, of this, so yeah, thank you. Okay, so let's uh, now write this action and expand it to quadratic order in phi. So that's very simple and we get a quadratic action that basically uh, chiral boson at each value in phi and the two point function, which in the original theory a free fermion is a one loop graph. In this effective theory becomes a three level diagram with a propagator of phi. 
and the all the formula the calculation can be done and one can check that the two point function is reproduced but one can also go to higher um, point function so here the free fermion theory map to an interacting theory of the scalar field the interaction comes from various places it's because for example in this uh Westumino witten term there are all term of higher order in phi and we expand the exponents of the Poisson bracket uh, and also in the energy there is also non non nonlinear terms and when we write it down the result is complicated but very unique the prescription is given we just follow the calculus the, the 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 formula and then we can write out all the interaction terms it, interestingly, free fermion become interacting uh, bosons in this approach. And bosons are different value of theta coupled to each other, in, uh, unlike in the linear approximation, quadratic approximation. Yes, the W, the w is H. Is H? This is the Hamiltonian, uh, that is the minus the integral of dt of the Hamiltonian. So that Hamiltonian is just the energy associated with the Fermi surface that is perturbed. Uh, integral of p square over 2m, for example. And this SWZW is the first derivative term in phi. Uh, so here we see um, this result is complicated, but one can do the following check, which is quite non-trivial. That is, one can compute three-point diagram, three-point functions, row, row, row correlation function, and check that it is exactly equal to the sum of all the three graphs that arises from the interaction between the phi fields. So uh, loop diagrams in fermion is exactly equal to uh, the sum of the three graphs. And moreover, here we see the cancellation between two different Feynman diagram in the case of fermions uh, become natural in the bosonic language. That is, if individually each of these fermion diagram is one over Q and cancel each other to be Q to the zero power, each of the diagram in the bosonic theory is already automatically of order Q to the zero. It's a non-trivial check. Oh, thank you. And including the Landau parameter in this theory can be done uh, uh, by just saying that instead of uh, the Hamiltonian being the integral of uh, energy over distribution function, we also include, for example, the Landau parameter terms. So here I write the, the classic Landau parameter term, but there, in principle, one can also write down all kind of Landau parameters that depends on, say, derivative of the distribution function or three point uh, uh, Landau's parameter, et cetera. So here, in principle, one can envision a program similar to effective field theory. That is, one write down the effective action based on certain symmetry and then expand it in derivatives. OK, so I have a few minutes left. Right, let me mention some a possible extension of this formalism. So one thing that one can notice is that the fermion bilinear in a theory of fermion form a closed algebra. And in the long wavelength limit, that closed algebra is actually the algebra of canonical transformation. And that means that we can uh, extend the theory to include, for example, spinful Fermi surface. We need to extend the algebra to include not only psi dector psi, but psi dector sigma a psi, where sigma is a spin uh, matrix, Pauli matrix. And also we can extend the uh, theory to a BCS, to include BCS uh, order parameter by extending the algebra of canonical transformation to algebra that contains psi psi operator on psi dector psi dector operator. This would still be a closed algebra. Okay, so let me conclude. The method of co-adjoint orbits provide a natural way to write down an effective theory of a Fermi liquid. Uh, the, the outcome of this formalism is a non-linear bosonized version of Landau's Fermi liquid theory. 
it reproduces uh, nonlinear and linear, both linear and nonlinear um, Fermi liquid responses. And perhaps it's a suitable starting point uh, for the study of non Fermi liquids. Thank you very much. So maybe this is a, a very naive question, but I'm still having trouble understanding where the advantage here is on what people do all the time in the sense of trying to write down effective Ginzburg-Landau by decomposing exactly the Fermi surface into its various shape fluctuations and then taking a four fermion term, doing hubbard stratonovich and integrating out. Is it is it in control? Is it in the way that you can extend it? Where, where exactly is the advantage of using the coadjuvant? This, this formalism gives rise to a very unique construction that is all the interaction, for example, at the three, three, point, uh, three point function uh, uh, interactions are all well defined. When people do this, let me, let me just say that this formalism allows one to not think too much <laughs> and just follow the mathematics. Um, I, I actually don't know uh, if there is a, 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 a more um, a way, a more a way to actually arrive to this uh, interacting interaction between the bosons in a way that people have been trying to do so far. In the formulation of the Boltzmann equation, there is also an approach that you introduce an inner product uh, that looks to remotely similar. Of course, um, so the question is, could I uh, write down a field theory for the Boltzmann equation and um, or reversely write down the hydrodynamic version of a Fermi liquid, uh, just as I can write down a hydrodynamic theory of th that follows from a, from a Boltzmann equation? By the Boltzmann equation, you mean just the equation? This this uh, with the collision will... term. Oh, with the collision uh, 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 with the collision term. Well, for, for example, because then you have, um, uh, I mean, you can write down the Boltzmann mm -hmm. equation also in terms of inner products that look very very similar to the ones that you have mm -hmm. um, uh, written down there. Uh, but uh, you always stay, of course, at the level of the equation of motion. You try it in a mm -hmm. Schrodinger type form and so forth. Mm -hmm. But uh, I could now conceive that you write it using this action principle to write down the hydrodynamic field theory that would follow from the Boltzmann equation or vice versa that would apply to Fermi liquid theory. Is this... Yeah, the collision term has uh, break time reversal. So I'm actually not sure if, if, uh, if uh, simple action uh would be sufficient it might be an action on a double contour but i haven't thought uh, about that mm -hmm. uh, very interesting uh so if it is a true quantum theory so you, you also need to tell us probably what is a measure of integration what's independent field, fields uh -huh. So is it some kind of hard me measure of, of your capital use? I think so. Yeah, it would be a hard measure of uh, in, in a capital U. And in invariant of, under the group mm -hmm. action. Yeah. And in terms of your phi field, it's just supposedly flat. That I'm not actually sure. Near uh, mm -hmm. presumably, yeah. Presumably. There is a question in the chat from Andrei Chubukov. Um, does this formalism allow one to study non-analytic corrections to Fermi liquid? Example, the T squared term in the specific heat in two dimensions. I would hope so. That would come from a loop correction in the uh, bosonic field theory, but we have not um, analyzed it. There, there is one more question in the chat from Ahmed Salah. Are all elements in coadjoint orbital regular values? I'm not sure. Regular values? Yeah. Uh, so we are here 
concentrating on the part of the cosine orbit near F0, so that makes everything uh, simple, but we have not tried to think about the global properties of the uh, coagulant orbit. Maybe, maybe the last question. I, actually, this, this is probably an extension of Jorg plus Andre's question. So you showed nicely that you can very quickly get the polarization. So presumably you can get the, the zero sound collective modes. Now in, in Helium 3, it's also known very simply calculation and experiment that you, you increase temperature and it goes from zero sound to, to regular sound. You just get this crossover. It's a, can you do this with this theory? Do you also get, as you just increase temperature, the crossover? Probably not exactly this theory because this theory is, is zero temperature because F0, we start, the coagulant orbit all have sharp Fourier surface. So to extend that to non-zero temperature, we have to extend presumably the coagulant orbit to include non-sharp Fourier surfaces. But you could do it with disorder as well, probably. So it stays at zero temperature, but have a disorder type lifetime, but that's also not included, right? The lifetime of the zero sum at zero temperature? Or? Yeah, give us give the fermions a lifetime by adding disorder, but I guess that's also not in this theory. Not to in the um, in the um, I would guess not in the three level version of the theory, but presumably it also it it is included in the in the loop some loop diagram. All right, if there are no other questions, let's thanks for again.